Hello, my name is Holt Hanley and I make daily forecast and educational weather videos. A little bit about myself is that when I was 14 years old, I decided I wanted to become a weatherman. My story of how I got into weather is a little bit different than most people who are obsessed with the weather. For most people, they were like eight years old and a hurricane came over their house and they were awed by the power of the storm and they've been obsessed with weather ever since. Well, my story is a little bit different than that because as it turns out, California doesn't really have exciting weather. For me, it actually happened one day when I was about 14 years old and my dad asked me, Holt, what do you think you want to do with your life? Like, what do you, what do you want to study in college? And I was a little thrown back because I'd never really thought about this before. But what I did was I thought about all his friends and who seemed to have the best, coolest life. And one of our family friends is Bill Martin, who is the chief meteorologist for KTVU in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I thought about it. And he, his job was basically he'd go into work, he'd study the weather maps, research what was going on around the country. I've always been really interested in science, so that appealed to me. Also, I've always had a connection with weather because I've surfed since I was a young kid. And if you don't know, surfing is very weather dependent. It's the big storms that create the swell and the waves in the first place. And then you gotta always be checking the winds because that really plays a big role in if the surf's gonna be good. So I was already checking weather forecasts every day. And then I thought about his life. He goes in, studies weather for about an hour or two, and then puts his report together and then goes on live TV and talks about it. He's able to learn all day about one of the coolest things ever and then go out on live TV, which I figured would not get old, that would always be exciting. And then he's able to share his knowledge. And I've always really liked, you know, conversation and communication. So it was really the combination of three of my favorite things. Surfing, which ties into weather, and then also the communication aspect. So all that really appealed to me. So I was like, you know, dad, I, I think I wanna be a weatherman. And basically for the last 10 years, I've been on this track. The first thing I did was Bill Martin was nice enough to actually give me an internship at KTVU when I was just in high school. Now, at this time, I did not really know anything about weather except for the little charts I would check for the surf. So I couldn't really do all that much at the internship, but it was just amazing to get to see Bill Martin in action. He would, I didn't really know what he was looking at when he was studying the forecast maps, but then the thing that really stood out to me was we would just be chatting, you know, having a good time. And then the camera would switch to him and he would just click into this amazing mode where he would just be able to perfectly communicate everything that he'd learned. And just, it, it, it honestly seemed like the coolest thing in the world to me, how the camera just flipped to him and he just flipped a switch and was just, it was amazing. That, that's, a, that's as much as I could say. And, it was from that second I was like, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. And I've been on track with that ever since. So I went to Cal Poly and got a degree in earth science. They didn't have a meteorology degree, but earth science was the closest I could get. And it was nice because I got a background in all the different kinds of sciences. I had a little climate studies, some soil science, geology, really a collection of everything. And then while I was down there, in San Luis Obispo, I interned at uh, KSBY under Dave Hovde. Shout out Dave, thanks for the internship. And while I was there, I was able to practice in front of the green screen for the very first time, which, which was pretty ugly. My, my first forecast videos, I'm gonna have to post them someday so everyone can see how absolutely bad I was when I first tried it out. Green screen's a little harder than it looks when you're first trying it out. I might have to post that one someday, but it was practice and I got, got dipped my foot in the water, got a little taste of what it would be like. And Dave Hovde actually also gave me the idea for starting my own weather page. So that's what I did. I started on Facebook as Mustang Meteorology, which was the Cal Poly mascot. And I would give little forecasts practice little forecast videos about the forecast for San Luis Obispo. 
And then I decided to expand it to just be national so that more people would be interested in my page. Renamed it Holt Hanley Weather and that is still up, up today. I now have a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube page, even a podcast app or even a podcast as well. And so I've been keeping up to date with that. The best thing that provided was practice speaking. That's one of the hardest things. Talking on camera is pretty uncomfortable when you first try it out. So I realized, when based on how bad my first forecast video was in front of the green screen, I was like, I can't just graduate college and try to go straight into live forecasts. I need to start practicing my skills now if I wanna be good enough to go on live TV. So that's what I did. I started doing practice videos and then ended up interning again for Bill Martin at KTVU. Made just a ton of videos my, my, between my junior and senior year in undergrad. <laughs> I said that kind of weird. In undergrad. And I got a little bit better, got a little bit more confidence. Made another video that wasn't absolutely terrible. Made a little progress. Practice makes progress. That's one of my favorite sayings. So I got my, ended up getting my degree in earth science, held a couple of internships, and then continued to stay up to date with putting out videos on YouTube and Facebook. And then when I had my degree, I asked Bill Martin, I said, all right, what, what's the next step? Where do I go from here? And he said, the next thing you got to do is get a CBM. For those of you who don't know, that's a certificate in broadcast meteorology. It's issued by the American Meteorological Society. And it basically is a stamp of approval saying that you have a, the background education in meteorology. And he said, you pretty much need that to get into the big market. So I said, all right. And I looked into it and it was going to take me about three years to do all the classes and coursework to get that certificate. I had not done any calculus, any physics, or any meteorology classes. I only took one climate class in my undergrad. So it was gonna take about three years of extra classes after undergrad just to get the certificate. So I looked into it and to get a master's was gonna take four years. So I figured, you know what, let's go for it. Let's go for the full master's. And that's the track I've been on for the last three to four years right now. First thing I did was I went to a community college, did two years of calculus, physics, programming, just to, as a way to prepare myself for graduate school. And then about six months ago, I started at San Jose State to get my master's in meteorology. The reason I picked San Jose State is because they have the top fire weather program in the entire country and possibly the world for that matter. There's an entire fire lab. We have a LIDAR truck, a radar truck that we actually deploy to fires to get a bunch of data to help forecast these kind of extreme wildfires in the future. And I was, I've always been really interested in fire weather because that's really, at the beginning of this video, I said California doesn't have any exciting weather. Well, the one thing we do have is fire weather. We get extremely bad wildfires in California. So I figured, hey, if I could become an expert on fire weather, then may, maybe I could be part of the solution to this problem that the Western United States is currently in. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm actively earning my master's in meteorology while studying fire weather. Over the next few months, I'll be going down to Santa Barbara to study the offshore winds that create extreme fire danger for the entire Santa Barbara region. So that will be interesting. I'll keep you guys updated with what I learned with that. As well as I do daily forecast videos as for a couple of reasons. The first reason that I produce all these videos, the daily forecast, the educational videos, the fire weather videos, is this, first off, it's great practice. It's, like I said, it's a little uncomfortable talking on camera at first. So doing these videos is really a way for me to practice my communication skills and being able to explain weather in a way that anybody could understand. That's one of my, that's one of my other favorite sayings is that Unless you can explain something in simple terms, then you don't really understand it. So that's what I've been practicing for the last few years now. And if you ever see something on my channel that you don't understand, call me out, say, Holt, you did not explain that very well. Because that's what I'm trying to do. It's great practice making these videos because this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So 
I, I gotta get good somehow. The second thing is I just think weather's awesome. And honestly, the more I learn about weather, the more I'm amazed by it. I'm learning more and more about weather every single day throughout my master's program. And I swear, every single day, something about the weather that I learn just blows me away. I'm like, wow, that is awesome. So it's also just the aspect. I love the weather and I love being a part of this weather community. If you're watching this far into the video, you probably like weather too. So I love having the ability to talk with you guys and then hear what you guys have to say back. So if you ever shoot me a comment or a message, I will reply. And I'm always constructive, I'm always open to constructive criticism as well. So if there's any way that you think my forecast videos could get better, just let me know in the comments. And yeah, I think that pretty much sums up who I am, how I got into weather, some of the experience I've gained, and why I'm doing this. So I hope to see you sometime in the future, and thanks for watching.